the biggest issue I have with dieting uh, and, and getting programs going is what we see on the internet uh, where you've got somebody that's in super shape and they're telling you that you just have to buy 41 pieces of Tupperware and every Sunday night you spend three and a half hours, right? And you portion out your little machine and it's eight and a half ounces of rice and it goes together and you have to cook it all up and then you package it and then you got this little thing that looks like you're carrying a heart on the way to surgery, right? You know, that thing mm -hmm. that they come running in with, mm -hmm. that's going to be mm -hmm. your food for the day. You got your seven meals and away you go. No one's going to do that. No, no one's going to do that long term, right? You're not going to get to the average masses and say, this is what you need to do. And this is, again, in my opinion, and if you have a different opinion, I'm happy to hear it. It just, for me, I've seen so many people fail trying to do so much work to lose weight that it's just not, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Uh, and I've not seen, that seems to be the predominant theory because the ones that are the most professional and that look the best and do the best, that seems to be the, the prevailing theory, as I said. So uh, that was the number one question that I wanted to ask you because I see so many fail uh, way more than, uh, than succeed on that program. Your thoughts? Yes, that's a good one. Well, my question, I have a question sure. first for you. When you were doing that meal prep and that seven day a week thing, hoping that this was going to get you below 256, did you see yourself doing that when you were 80? No. Okay. No. So diet is actually by definition pattern of eating for man or mammal. And my whole platform is about, we're not going to chase diets and fads because we need to figure out a pattern of eating that you can do now that you can do when you're 80. And if we haven't found it yet, we're not there. So what I caution against with doing heavy duty meal prep is with what you exactly just said, it's not sustainable it's unrealistic and it doesn't create a lifestyle because people now we're people are smart like success leaves clues you know that if people are successful in business in finance and relationships in health and their exercise they can be successful in weight loss as well you just kind of need to learn the lane you just need to learn the basics. So what I seek to do is just teach people about protein, fat, and fiber at every meal, make maintaining or losing weight, no big deal. The reason for that is those are the three macronutrients. I say fiber, fiber is the zero calorie part to a carbohydrate. So I'm really talking about protein, fat, and carb, but we're focusing on fiber. And here's why. Fiber is a zero calorie part to a carbohydrate. Your body can't digest it. It's indigestible. It'd be like a paper clip. It's just going to pass through. And what we're looking to do is create, um, eat more foods that are high in fiber. So we lower the net carb because in the absence of net carb, your body will burn fat for fuel. So this is like basic science. On average, people's muscle and liver storage capacity for net carb about 35 grams. So when you go too far above that, it's going to overflow outside the storage tank of muscle and liver, overflow into body fat. So what we need to do is we need to raise up people's fiber, same time lowering carbohydrates so we have low net carb. That way, all the net carbs can get stored in your muscle or liver, which then forces your body to burn fat for fuel. That's science. It's like math. One plus one equals two. Like that's just how it works. So then when I get people to eat meals that are protein, fat, and fiber, we're turning off eight hungry hormones. We're stretching your stomach, telling your brain you're full. And when you have these eight hungry hormones working in your behalf, your cravings go down, your blood sugar is balanced. So it's kind of like being on a kitty roller coaster, no spikes, no crashes. And What's happening is you're eating foods that are making you actually feel good. They taste delicious. And then what's happening is the food is working in your behalf, finally, for the first time. So the trick is really beginning to lock into proteins important, obviously, because it protects and preserves your lean muscle, turns off hungry hormones. Fat helps you to feel calm and relaxed and slows gastric emptying. So you feel full longer. But the fiber, that's the one that I get so excited about because since your body can't digest it, then what's going to happen is your body's going to burn calories trying to digest it while it's working its way through your GI tract. There's your cardio. And so what will happen is your stomach will stretch. You'll feel full for hours. Fiber acts like a broom and a sponge, soaks up calories, fats, and toxins, ushers them out of the body into the toilet bowl. Studies show when you get your fiber to 24 grams a day, 
malabsorb about 90 calories a day over the course of a year, just adding in fiber, you can have a 10 pound weight loss by adding this in. So once I get people understanding that we just forgot about this super unsexy nutrient called fiber and how it can work to our benefit, once people start to see protein, fat, and fiber in the absence of net carbs, body burns fat for fuel, it starts to make so much sense and you don't wake up with a food hangover and you're feeling better and you have better energy and you're sleeping better and you're more productive in the bathroom, all of a sudden that yo-yo dieting starts to fall away because you realize you have control. You realize I can do this forever. Then I start teaching thoughtful indulgences, how we work in your top five favorite foods, because we have to create a pattern of eating if you have weight to lose in a similar way that it's going to look when you're done losing the weight. Because to your point, when you've meal prepped or you've done a hard diet, as soon as you got to the end of it, you put the weight back on. Right. So we really need to reverse how we're looking at this. But the encouraging thing is, well, it's discouraging that 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. But the encouraging thing is that we're starting to want to be thought of in our identity as healthy eaters with a healthy lifestyle. People are starting to want to get away from always feeling like they're on a diet. And I think that finally we're at a place where there's a gym on every corner, yet two out of three Americans are overweight. That's not working. And people are realizing we've really got to get this kitchen part right, but we want to know how to do it right. I am. Uh, give me some ideas on when you say fiber, what are you talking about? Okay. So fiber is going to be found in your fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. So a lot of this is just how do we sub out some of like, say high fiber or high carbohydrate crackers like Cheez-Its or Triscuits and sub in some new brands that are coming on the market that are higher fiber, lower net carb. For instance, one of them that I love is called GG crackers. You get them off Amazon, GG Scandinavian crackers. And these, now these are dry and they're not delicious, like dry graham cracker. You got to think like that. But when you top it with, say, peanut butter and sugar-free jelly, you got kind of like a healthy up peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. Or you can top them with Greek whipped cream cheese and smoked salmon and some basil. And you kind of have a healthy tweaked up bagel and cream cheese. When you feel full and your blood sugar is not going all over the place, suddenly foods like this start tasting a lot better. A lot of people don't know what it feels like to feel good during the day and to have energy during the day where most people are starving themselves until they can't take it anymore. And then they're just binging and they get that quick sugar spike and crash. Most people feel terrible all the time. Right. 